A lot of beginners struggle when choosing automation, whether they should go with flows or use Apex programming. I know it's quite common. So if you're one of them, don't worry. This video will serve as your complete guide and will help you decide exactly when to choose flows and when to use Apex. By the end of this video, I'll make sure this confusion never bothers you again. Hello everyone, I'm Shrey Sharma, your Salesforce Hulk. Today, we will decode flows and Apex to help you choose the right approach. Let's first dive in to understand why exactly do we need automation in Salesforce. So, there are many tasks in Salesforce that are repetitive and time consuming, like entering data, sending out emails, and updating records. These tasks can take up a lot of your day and can sometimes lead to mistakes. Automation helps by taking over these tasks for you. It saves your time, makes sure everything is done the same way every time and helps you focus on more important things like talking to customers and closing leads. Plus, it can save your money and make your customers happier. Now that you know how automation can be your best friend in Salesforce, let's talk about the two main approaches you can use to automate your tasks, flows and Apex. You can think of them as the tools offered by Salesforce that makes you work smarter, not harder. First up, let's understand about Salesforce flows. So flows are visual tools that allow you to design and automate business processes by dragging and dropping elements onto a canvas. They're designed to be user-friendly, so you don't need to be a programmer to create them. With flows, you can handle complex business logic, guide users through screens, update records, and send emails, all without writing code. You can think of it like a flowchart builder where you can connect different elements to define a series of automated actions. Now let's talk about Apex. Unlike Flow's drag and drop approach, Apex is a full-fledged programming language designed specifically for Salesforce. Apex provides you with incredible flexibility and control. It gives you the power to handle complex calculations, massive data migrations, or create highly customized features within Salesforce. While you won't need to dive into every detail, it's good to know that Apex uses concepts like triggers and classes. Triggers are like automated listeners that react to a specific event in Salesforce, like a record being created or updated. And classes are reusable blocks of code that perform specific tasks. Okay, if this sounds way too much, then let me take a simple example to help you understand both. Imagine you're running a subscription-based e-learning platform. You offer monthly subscriptions and users can earn loyalty points for every month they stay subscribed. Now let's see how Flows and Apex can handle this. Suppose your system automatically grants a 50 loyalty points to a user every time their subscription renews. A Flow can easily handle this process. When a subscription renewal payment is successful, a record triggered Flow is activated to update the user's loyalty points in the system. It's pretty straightforward. The Flow checks the renewal status. It adds 50 points to the existing loyalty points field. Finally, it sends a confirmation email to the user about the updated points. This kind of automation is perfect for Flows because it's linear, involves simple decision making and doesn't require much customization. Now let's complicate things. Imagine you want to introduce a tier based loyalty system. Users earn points based on how many consecutive months they have been subscribed. 50 points for the first six months, 75 points for the seven to 12 months and 100 points for 13 plus months. This requires more advanced logic. The system has to first check the user's subscription history, then calculate the consecutive months of subscription and apply the appropriate points based on the tier. While Flow can theoretically handle this, the logic becomes clunky and prone to errors with multiple decision nodes and formulas. So in this case, Apex is the perfect fit. How? You can write an Apex trigger that queries the subscription history, determines the user's current tier, dynamically calculates the points based on their tier, updates the user's loyalty points and tier. Apex also makes it easier to handle exceptions like when a user skips a month and then reactivates their subscription. It will make sure their tier calculation is accurate. Now, let's compare flows and Apex based on five key parameters. Ease of use, development time, customization, scalability, and order of execution. So number one is ease of use. We all know that Flow offers an intuitive drag and drop interface, making it accessible without any coding knowledge. But the person designing the Flow must have strong logical thinking ability. While on the other hand, Apex requires programming skills to implement. The second point is development time. Now when it comes to development time, Flow excels in quickly setting up simple automations, while Apex is better suited for implementing complex logic, which may require more time to develop. In terms of customization, Flow provides pre-built formulas to customize your automation to a certain extent, while Apex offers endless flexibility and control through coding, allowing for highly tailored solutions. For scalability, Flow has now become capable for complex tasks 
besides individual records. Whereas Apex shines in handling bulk data processing and large scale operations. Regarding the order of execution, Flow runs at specific points during record changes, while Apex gives you the flexibility to control precisely when and how logic executes. But it demands a deeper understanding of Salesforce execution order. So choosing between Flow and Apex depends on the complexity of your automation needs, your coding expertise, and the scale of your operations. Let's take a scenario within our previous example to understand it better. A user renews their subscription and the system immediately grants them 50 loyalty points and sends an email. The flow works seamlessly for this straightforward task. But when you're migrating legacy data to Salesforce and calculating loyalty tiers for thousands of existing users based on their historical subscription data, Apex bulk processing capabilities and custom logic make it the clear choice here. So Flow excels at automating simpler as well as complex everyday tasks. Apex takes the wheel for scenarios requiring bulk operations. The best approach often involves a combination of both Flow and Apex. And that's all. I hope this video has cleared all your doubts and you got to know everything to make the right decision. If the video was helpful, then don't forget to hit the like button. Make sure to share it with people who might need it. And don't forget to hit the bell icon while you're subscribing to the Salesforce channel so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.